In this tutorial, we are going to understand the concept inter-thread communication in Java. In the previous tutorial, we have already covered synchronization. And in the, that video, we have, I have just explained a consumer and a producer problem briefly in that program. And we have also create, implemented that program in Java. In this video, we are going to use the same program and modify it a little bit. And we will see what problems will it solve if we will enable the communication between the threads. So inter-thread communication is essentially the communication among threads. So if we have multiple threads in our program, we can actually uh, make them make a communication between them so that we will be able to uh, get a much desired program and we will see what that desired program is. So let's discuss the synchronization problem first. So first we have created a producer, a producer thread like this. And we have also created a consumer thread in our program in the previous video. If you haven't watched the video, you will have to watch it. I have given the link to that video in the description below, or you can click the I button here. It is also available in our Android application. All right. so. We have created a variable x which represents a shared resource and we created a function update items update items function and this function was synchronized because we uh, used the word synchronized in front of it so this was a synchronized function so what we do is the producer thread will uh, access this function to update the value of x by incrementing its value by one and the consumer thread consumes the value of x by decrementing the value of x by one but since we have synchronized the program only one thread will be able to update the item and when if one thread is actually executing this function no other thread in the program will be able to access this function and we saw that this was actually uh, enabled by Java internally as the mutex lock. So a producer thread is basically what it was doing is it was incrementing the value of x by one. And since we enabled a for loop, which was running five times so that we can observe for the next five iterations, uh, we can see the value of x gets incremented by one. Now, after the producer thread has completed its execution it will come out of the monitor and the consumer thread will enter the monitor and the thread which is inside a monitor is only able to execute this function so what now consumer thread will do it will start decrementing the value of x by one like this it will go on so uh, like this so you have seen that we have already implemented this whole program in Java in the previous tutorial. So if the producer thread is trying to access this, the consumer thread will not be able to access it. So if the consumer thread is not able to access it, what is going to happen with this thread? Is, is it going to stop? What is going to happen with this thread? We are concerned with that. Now we know that we have initialized both of these threads, the consumer thread and the producer thread at the same instance, at the same time or simultaneously. Now, since these two threads are running, uh, they were, uh, we have created or initialized these two threads at the same time. It means that both of these threads are actually consuming CPU. So I'm going to write here consuming CPU resources. So even though the consumer thread is not e executing this function, it is actually consuming the CPU because it is actually uh, running inside the program. And what is doing, it is sitting idle. The consumer thread is sitting idle for five iterations and then it is going to come into action. Now, this is not a desired program because CPU resource is very crucial to us if the program becomes uh, very big, if we are actually handling millions of products, then we will have to do something such that the producer and the consumer thread, both of these threads 
will uh, work hand in hand they are going to act uh, simultaneously and since we want to uh, make these both of these thread work simultaneously there has to be some communication among them uh, and what our, our objective is let me just first write the objective the objective of inter thread communication and in this example is that producer should produce producer should produce an item and immediately immediately consumer will consume it consumer will consume it now this is what act what is the objective of our program so what we want is when a producer produces an item uh, although we know it is going to produce five items since we want to enable multitasking what we are doing is we are saying that as soon as the x becomes equals to one because of the producer in the first iteration let's say i equals to one what the consumer will do the consumer will decrement the value of it by one at the same time so again the value of x has become zero then again the producer will produce one more item and again the consumer will consume it and this will happen for five iterations because of our for loop and for five times the consumer is going to consume it now there is a question that arises in the situation that how will the consumer know that the producer has produced an item or how a producer will know that a consumer thread has consumed an item so this is enabled this uh, these questions are answered by introducing the communication among threads and basically communication in threads is enabled using two very important inbuilt functions which are wait and notify functions we are going to see them them in action in java but i'm going to explain you these two very in uh, very easy terms so now let's suppose in the first iteration the producer creates an item now what the producer will do since the producer has created an item or produced an item it has incremented the value by one now it will wait for some time and that time in that time the consumer thread will have to start its execution so how will the consumer will know that the producer thread wants it to execute so what the producer thread it is the responsibility of the producer thread to notify the consumer thread to actually decrement the value of uh, x by one so after calling the wait function it is going to call the notify function so what this notify function will do it will trigger the thread which is actually trying to access this synchronized function remember this function is synchronized in both the cases so now what we are going to do now the consumer knows that uh, the producer has notified that okay i'm waiting for some time in that time you can uh, meanwhile you can just decrement the value of x by one so the consumer will decrement the value of x by one and then it will wait for some time and then it is going to notify it is again going to call the notify function which will notify the producer that the consumer has changed the values and then the producer will again increment the value of x by one and again it will call these two functions and this will go on and on till five times and this is how we enable a communication uh, among threads in java now we're going to implement inter-thread communication in java so what we're going to do is we have the same program as we had in the synchronization in java video if you have watched that video we are just uh, using the same uh, program you can see this is the same program and you can see here we have initialized two function uh, two threads the producer and the consumer threads and they were both running at the same time 
Now you can see these are this is the consumer thread class and this is the producer thread class as we have created before. And this is the class update items. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use notify and wait functions. We're going to just modify this function update items to this one. And then we will be able to create a, a inter-thread communication in Java. Now let's see how this works. Now if the value of check is equals to equals to one, so you can see check is given as a parameter to this update items by the producer thread, which is here you can see in the run function, it is calling the update items and the value given is one. So if the value is one, then it means that we are inside the producer thread. So I'm going to write here inside the producer thread. So now one, once we are inside the producer thread, what we will do is the producer will increment the value of n, which was essentially the number of items, and it will increment the value of n by one. After doing that, it will call the notify function, which notifies the consumer thread. It notifies the consumer thread to come into action and it will display here you can see it will display the value of n producing n and after displaying this value it will wait for some time so we have called a wait function here and remember that this wait function has to be in the try catch block because this wait function may throw interrupted exception so we will have to handle it too now you can see our producer will increment the value of n, then it will notify the consumer thread and then it will wait for some time as we have seen in the concept. Now here comes the inside of the inside the consumer thread. All right, so inside the consumer thread, we have written a condition here if n equals to equals to zero because if the value of n is zero, it means that the producer has not produced anything. So if the producer has not produced anything, we are just going to wait. So we have called the wait function. And again, it is in the try catch block because we will have to handle this interrupted exception thrown by the wait function. Now what we will do if the value of n is not equal to uh, zero, we will decrement the value of n by one. So we will decrement the value of n by one and we will reach this line only if it is not waiting. If it is equal to zero, it will keep on waiting and it will not come at this point. So if the value of n is not equal to zero, it will come at this point and it will decrement the number of items by one. After decrementing, what it will do, it will simply notify the producer thread. It notifies the producer thread that now your uh, that it notifies the producer that thread that now uh, the producer should start producing and then it will simply display consuming so let's see the output of this program all right so you can see here as soon as the producer produces a single item immediately the consumer is consuming it and this is going to happen five times you can see this is happening five times because of our for loop here which was running from i equals to zero i less than six meaning five times so in this video we have done two things we have implemented synchronization and it is actually synchronization enabled with inter-thread communication so definitely this is a very important program you can find this whole program inside our android application just you will have to just search inter-thread communication in Java and then you will have to go to the video and below the video you will be able to see this whole code. So that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.